As our family gathers together this morning for this All Saints Remembrance, we listen once again to God's inspired words in John's first letter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. Now we could stop right there, but I'm not going to. Nope, this short sermon is not going to be that short because I'm not going to stop because God doesn't stop there. Did you listen closely? What is God telling us? He's telling us that you are not just his people. He's telling us you are not just his followers. Not simply his servants. You are a child of God. You depend on God for everything. So, fellow dependent of God, God the Father initiated this. I'm not just talking about this day, but initiated all things. Because God wanted you to be a part of his family so much that he sent his son as proof of his love. God the Son made your adoption into God's family possible. That's right, you are adopted into God's family. Listen to this. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace, which, which he has blessed us in the beloved. That's right. Jesus was here. Jesus was baptized. Jesus was transfigured, crucified, and resurrected, paying for your adoption, sealing it forever by the gift of the Holy Spirit, which came in your baptism. Proof of your adoption into his family. So God the Father now looks at you, and what does he see? He sees his child, the perfect work of the life of his son, Jesus Christ. But as I said earlier, wait, there's still more grace coming. Listen to the psalmist. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Yes, you heard it from God. You are a saint, and you are his delight. Lutherans struggle with calling ourselves a delight to God, right? Yeah, we do. We're humble. But who says we are a delight to God? God said it. So you've got to believe it. You are God's delight by grace through faith on account of what Christ Jesus did for you. Jesus has made you a delight in the eyes of God. Wow, this is quite a day to remember, isn't it? You see, your heavenly Father brought you into his family. His family for good. So, you may question, and you shouldn't, but you may question how do I know it's for good that I have been brought into God's family forever? You know that because God the Holy Spirit works to keep you within God's family, stirring up your hearts to do good works, to trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, even in your most difficult circumstances. The Spirit works to assure you that you stay in the family for good through the means of grace. Means of grace, a little Lutheran heritage here for you. Remember what it is? The Word of God and the sacraments. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. That is the means of grace. God's gifts to you, making you forgiven children of His. And equipping you for sanctified living. Okay, there's one of those terms, sanctified living. Paul uses it for, what does it mean? Sanctified meaning lives in it. The Holy Spirit with you is a lifelong process of making God's children holy. Complete holiness is attained when we are forever called home to be with Jesus. That's when that happens. And yet until we are called home to eternity, we do participate in the Spirit's work through the fellowship of believers, the Communion of saints, right? 
We confess that in our creed. We are the communion of saints. How do we do it? We do that when we rejoice with those fellow saints who rejoice. We do it when we mourn with those who mourn. We display the love of God in Christ toward one another in our weekly reunion. Our weekly reunion as the family of God. Family reunions have kind of fallen by the wayside, I think, in, in many, many ways. You know, you might talk about them still, and some families probably keep up with them, but uh, probably as far as doing them every year, whatever it might be, that's kind of gone by the wayside, I would think, unless maybe it has it in yours. And actually, Linnell and I had a family reunion last July 4th. Funny thing was, when we were planning for the family, and Linnell's family is much larger than what my family is, the attendees seemed to continue to grow and grow until we wondered if we were going to have enough room in our house or out in the yard or even have enough food to accommodate them. You see, what we realized was there was a common bond that united us. Because no matter what distance they came to gather together, no matter how long it's been since we've seen each other, no matter how their kids have grown and maybe we don't know them, we were all still family. All Saints Day is like a family reunion. A family reunion of God's family. It's one big reunion of saints. All saints. Like family members at a reunion, we remember those who are no longer with us. And sometimes that's not always a joy when we think about that. And yet, we still think about it, and that's quite all right. Today, though, we look back with joy to the example of those brothers and sisters who have been called home to eternity already. You see, family of Zion, our family reunion of saints happens every single week right here. As we gather, we are, once again, the communion of saints, united around God's word and God's sacraments. And not just those present physically, but united with all of God's saints. For centuries, we've heard the same readings from God's Word on this All Saints Day. They have been shaping our lives, and they have shaped the lives of those who have gone before us for centuries. And every year, as we come here and celebrate another All Saints Day, we commemorate the faithful departed this past year. From our family, it will be St. Esther. And it is the same day we remember the names of all of our loved ones who have passed through death to eternal life already. And that's quite all right because we have got a long list of those saints who have gone before us. Sometimes we, of course, wish they were right here with us. I think we do that because we cannot possibly comprehend what eternity, what Christ Jesus really is like. But you see, God always had something better planned for us, planned for his children, his saints, who were always, as we read, predestined for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, according to the purpose of God the Father's will. For what purpose? To the praise and adoration of God's glorious grace which he has blessed us in the Beloved. The Beloved is, of course, Jesus Christ, in whom we are blessed. So as we look back, we always also look ahead. Now, looking ahead, what do we see? We see that Jesus is coming again. We see there is going to be a final family reunion about to happen, but until it happens, God calls us to prepare for that day. He calls us to come to the family feast at a Lord's Supper, which we do right here. He calls us to be disciples and also to make disciples of others. To love even our enemies. 
Yeah. To live in the joy of being a baptized child of God every moment of every day, no matter what you're faced. To live in knowing that you are saints, not just today, but eternally. And to live in joy knowing that you are part of God's holy family. God himself made you a child of his. And God himself, in his eyes, you are his delight. Thank you, Jesus. And all God's people say, amen. amen.